paid forty dollars for it and sold for one thousand two hundred sixty one dollars in two hours. Not bad. So let me tell you the cool story behind the estate sale I went to. I was on my lunch break and I had an hour. So I was like, all right, there's a local estate sale. I always check estatesales.net. So I went to the estate sale and I saw immediately there was so many vintage, I wanna say close to antique camera items. It was cameras there, a bunch of lenses tripods they had a lot of kodak stuff I found this one lens from pierre angino and i did some research on it while i was there and come to find out the lens were selling on ebay for about 125 dollars and they had this thing sitting here for 15 dollars. so i picked that one up they ended up giving me a deal for 10 dollars. so i brought it back to my work and did some more research so the next day i went back with my girlfriend and we ended up being the only ones there left it was around two or three o'clock and i always like to go to estate sales on the last day because it's usually half off and sometimes you can even get better deals. I ended up picking up a couple of the lenses and a projector which I'm going to be showing you here. This is the infamous box where I got the lenses in. You can see the age on this box, probably 50, 60 years old. So this one had issues, major issues. The electrical cord was all broken up. I had to take the electrical cord off the back, unplug it, then I threw the electrical cord out. So what we're going to do with this one is we're just going to part it out. As you can see, the projector lens comes out. It's a light hexer and it's a, I want to say, yeah, 85 centimeter, two and a half focal point. And the lens itself is in great shape inside and outside. They're selling on eBay right now for about $80, $90. I'm going to try to take a hundred and then take a best offer only because it has the lights lens cap on the front. And then when you open up the back part of here, I'm going to try to part out some of this other stuff in here. Got the light in there. I probably won't be able to part the light out. But the little slides, yeah, those just come right out. And then there's another slide with the lens that's in front of it. That one's broken. It's going to be tossed. But the slide itself should be able to get get me like five, ten bucks. But sometimes the best way to make money on a, on something that has issues is by just parting it out. So if you look at this one, it's in good shape. So we'll sell that whole piece. I don't know how much you get for it yet. I haven't priced it out, but I do know the projector lens itself is going for about 80 to 100 dollars like i said i'll go try to get 100 dollars for it i'll take anything over 70 and then it also has the foot mount on the bottom where the stand is i don't know how much that's worth yet i may just sell that with the projector itself and i don't even know how much to sell the projector for i know the projector itself is going for 40 50 dollars but the money is where the, the projector lens is seems to be worth double the price than if you bought this whole 1940s prado 250 lights uh, wetzler So first up with our estate sale finds is a brass Schulz and Billerbeck antique cinema lens. It's brass and it's really heavy. It's made in Berlin. It's got the Uri plant and stigmat type. This focal point is five with a nine and a half inch. These ones are selling on eBay for over $200. Around the same shape with the scrapes and the nicks and the dust inside of it. And if you look really close on the inside, you'll see the little brass that's kind of come off a little bit. I think that adds a little extra patina to it. I'm going to list this one for 190. There's a couple that have sold around 250, 300, but they're a little bit better shape than mine. Still, they also have the nicks and the dust in it too, but I kind of want to get a quick sale on this one. This one really caught my eye. It's from Pierre Angino. This one actually came with the cap and the story behind this one is this is the one that I originally went out and saw and I bought and kind of forced me back into going on the last day of the estate sale to see what I could do and find and if they had any more other ones out there. Cause on my lunch break, I only had an hour. So I was in a rush and I kind of stumbled on these towards the end of my hour lunch break. So this one comes with the original cap. The cap alone is worth $50. And then with the lens included on it, I'm going to sell it for $145. It's in good shape. Just some nicks and some etching from the previous owner on the sides. But other than that, everything else in the front and the back is clean. This is just like the same exact PR Janelle I already have, but it's worth a little bit more of money. It's a 1.3, 15 millimeter with a C mount type, R1, made specifically for movie cameras, or as they call it, cinema cameras. Well made from France. So this next one up, is one of the, the big boys we got. This I was doing research on this morning and realized that I found out that it's actually worth a lot more than I was gonna list it for. I was originally gonna list it for $400, but I ended up finding some more information out about it. This lens is the same type of lens that was used to make the movie Citizen Kane. This is a highly sought after lens. 
The focal point is a 2.2 and it's a 18 and a half millimeter, which is hard to find anything with an 18 and a half millimeter. It's a retro focus. It comes with the plate. So the inside that's bolted to the plate is the lens. When you unscrew it, everything comes off of it and then the lens comes out just like the normal lens. So the only other one I found out there sold for about $2,300. It did not have the plate that it's in right now. It was in a little bit better condition. This one has some hazing on the inside. Other than that, it's in great shape. I didn't see any dust on the inside, just that hazing issue. So on this one, I'm gonna try to get $1,800 for it. I just listed it this morning. This is another Pierre Arginot and it's a retro focus. Next up, we have a set of antique condenser lenses from France. You can see the paper on it's really old too. He had quite a few of these at the estate sale. So they don't go for much, but I thought they were pretty gnarly looking. They look a little bit like uh, contact lenses. These are in pretty good shape too. These are only going to get us probably like $20, $25. That's how much we were going for on eBay. But we got two of them, sell it as a set. They're pretty thick too. So like if you put it up to the lenses, they're, they're actually longer than the lenses that we have down there. These are my tips when I'm looking for cinema or camera lenses. Number one, make sure they're durable. Meaning, make sure they're made of metal or aluminum. They're usually very heavy. Make sure you look for the focal length, which is usually an F with a slash next to it, and then it'll have like a 1.8 or a 2.5, those type of sections. That's the speed of the lens. Also look for what it is in millimeters. That's the size of the lens. Most of the ones that I got had dust or mold on them which is fine because they'll still sell for well. The one I sold for $1,260 had a lot of patina and dust in it, but that didn't stop him from buying it. One of my most important one is do your research. Take out your phone and look to see the prices that sold and if they've actually had any other ones out there. If they don't have any of the ones out there, that could be a huge advantage for you. You can basically set your own price. And my most important one for myself is trust my gut and my instincts. It never fails me wrong. The next lens up we have is an Alpha X 100 millimeter f3.5. This is a large format lens. The type of lens is a lens shutter. This was made in Rochester, New York. All these lenses are from the 50s or 60s. This one's selling for 125, I have it on eBay for. I couldn't find too much out there on this Alpha X specific one. There was other ones out there that were going for about 100, 120. So I decided since it's in pretty good shape, to list it for $125. It's totally different than the other ones. It's a lot bigger lens, wider, and uh, the diameter, as you can see, is a little wider than the other ones also. Yeah, I'm gonna list that one for $125. I'll probably take a best offer of anything over $100, and that seems pretty reasonable. The next lens we have is a Bell Howell Angino Cinema Lens. It's a 10 millimeter F1.8 retro focus, made in France. It's got a really wide angle lens. This one will sell for probably about $125. That's what I have it listed for right now. But some of other ones were going for about $160, $170, but they're in a little bit better shape. This one's etched personally by uh, the previous owner and it's gotten a lot of use out of it. Also has some hazing on the inside of the lens, as you can see there. I mean, it's not perfect condition. It's still gonna work and someone will still buy it to use it. And they're gonna pay quite a bit of money because these things uh, back in the day new were probably a couple thousand dollars each. So we have two that are almost identical. They just have different serial numbers in the back. They both come with a lens cap. They're from CP Gores, New York. And this is the Al Gore series, S1, 60 millimeter F4.5. This is an, it has an enlarging barrel and made for large format cameras also. And the real money's at when you sell these are the large format cameras and the lenses. Uh, that seems to be where the most expensive lenses come from when it comes to cinema lenses. But these ones are in really good shape. I would think around the same shape as the uh, Rolly, as you can see the first one, and this is the second one. It looks really cool when you change the focal point screws. And yeah, these are both in clean shape. The only difference between them is has they have two different serial numbers, which is probably different model numbers also. I just, I noticed that with different serial numbers, some of them are the same model numbers. But this thing, again, as you can see, they're both in great shape. Probably the best shape that we have out of all of them, again, with the besides the Rolly. This one, we're probably going to sell for about $130. And the other one, we're going to sell for about $130 also. Again, it has the caps with them, so that adds value to it. Now the next lens has a leather case that came with it. It's a Rolly, Germany made leather case and the lenses from Germany. The model on this one's a Hedosmat, Rollinair, number two. Actually, it's called a Bay 2 lens. 
These are selling on eBay anywhere from $150 to $200. I couldn't find this exact type of lens, but I'm still gonna list it for about $120. And I'll take a best offer of anything over hundred bucks, but it's not bad for a find that was in a box for $40. I mean, it's in great shape. This is probably the best looking lens we have out of all of them, the shape wise, even though the other ones are worth more because most likely they're gonna fix up the other lenses to use. This one's gonna go for good money. Next up is an Adexa reflex camera. This one came with a leather travel case that screws into the tripod. The lens on this one is an Enerwerk Munchen Lithogon 35 millimeter lens. The lens alone sells for $250 on eBay. The Adexa reflex camera sells for about $100, $150 and more. I'm gonna try to get them together, sold for about $400. This is a film camera, 35 millimeter. I mean, it's in, it's in good shape, it works. And then it also came with the leather case. This leather case is really old. I would say 50s, 60s, and from the estate sale, the owner who owned it probably was the original owner. You can see it's a tripod right there to hook into it. So the last one we have up is the granddaddy of all of them. This one's the most beat up on the sides. The insides are fine, just light hazing. But it's pretty beat up on the outside and it doesn't matter. I listed this on eBay. For $1,700, took 30% off of it, came to $1,261. I listed it at work on a couple days ago on Friday afternoon on my lunch break. Two hours later, I got a uh, notification from PayPal that the buyer paid in full $1,261. Pretty cool to see that you can find something and basically guess on how much it's worth. And then once you sell it, you know you you did the right thing by pricing it pretty high. Although it sold quickly, I'm sure there was more money to be made off this. It's going to be going to Japan. No clue what they're doing with it. I'm pretty sure they're going to update the lens on the inside and then use it. And it's it's pretty beat up on the outside, but the insides are fine. I mean, for, for $40 in this whole lot, $1,261, you cannot complain at all on just one lens. And if I can get $1,800 for the other lens, it's absolutely amazing how I can turn $40 into this. It unscrews the top. It's a CP Gores, three inch Al Gore S from their American Optical. Probably back in the late 60s or early 60s. It seems like they switched from CP Gores to American Optical CP Gores. It's their American version. All their other ones are made in uh, Germany. And then this is an F2.3. And as you can see, there's three different parts to it. So it's got this long barrel on it. And then the lens itself and the back part of the lens, that's gonna be the mount for it. We paid $40 for it and sold it in two hours. I'll take $1,261 any day, not bad. Here's a word of advice. Don't just stick to one niche. Learn almost everything about all the other stuff that you can when it comes to vintage items or newer items, whether it's clothing, camera lenses, antiques, whatever it is, because the more you learn, the more you're going to make. So other than the lens and the projector, we end up finding a old 1950s tripod. It's a video camera tripod for the videographer that owned it. He was a professional videographer and photographer. I know I didn't mention that earlier, but I would have loved to have his job, just the stuff that he's seen back in the day and where he went. I mean, a lot of the stuff that he owned was worth a lot of, lot of money. When I was talking to the people at the estate sale, they said um, they had a camera guy come to almost value almost all the stuff, which obviously I think he was off on. The camera guy who evaluated the stuff at that estate sale said that he's never seen quite a collection like this of high end, high value lenses and cameras. The people at the estate sale that were selling the stuff I think they were family because they said there was a guy that came in and bought over a thousand dollars worth of stuff on the first day that they had the estate sale. I'm guessing that they, he went to a pre-sale before anything was else out there. And if you want to know anything about pre-sales, go to my other video I did about three, four years ago. And if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe because we'll be putting more out there coming soon. I want to show you three quick tips that I can give to you. First tip, I go to statesales.net. It provides me with pictures and the quality of the estate sale it's gonna be. Tip two, I go on the first day to scope out the sale. Tip three, I like to go last day on 12 p.m. because that's when you're gonna get all the good deals. 
a lot of times it's half off and more. I'm also gonna provide these quick tips in the description below. What is the most rare estate sale find or thrifting find that you have found? I'd love to hear what they were, so please put them in the comments below.